Welcome to the Mason Library's tutorial on library database search strategies. After viewing this tutorial, you will be able to develop keywords based on your topic, utilize Boolean operators to make search strings, identify disciplinary jargon, and mine for additional keywords. We conduct research almost every day, whether we realize it or not. Conducting academic research includes many of the same elements that we use to find what classes to take, find a new movie on a streaming service, or shop online. We have an information need we must address. Let's use the following research question as our example. What effect does listening to music have on the well-being of undergraduate students? The first step in finding relevant sources is developing keywords. These are words or phrases that capture the main idea of a research question and are used to retrieve relevant information. They help databases to understand what is being searched. Let's look at our research question and break it down into keywords. Our strategy for picking keywords is to look at the question, bold or highlight the nouns, then use those nouns as our keywords. This short list of keywords may not be enough to get us all the information we need. A useful technique is to think of synonyms of our keywords. For our research question, these might include songs, mental health, and college students. Putting together different combinations of these words will help you retrieve more information. Let's try some of these keywords in one of our library's databases. When thinking about what database to choose, we consider what type of expert we are looking for, such as an educator or a psychologist. Since we're not sure right now, let's try one of the multidisciplinary databases such as Academic Search Complete. This will include information from experts from many different fields and with different perspectives. Let's search. First, we enter the keywords music, well-being, and undergraduate students. The database is suggesting that we use this list of synonyms, so let's try that. We also see the default connectors of these search fields is the word and. This means that the database is only going to look for articles that include all these words. Other less common options include or and not. Notice that the database connected the synonyms with the words or in the undergraduate students field. This means it will retrieve articles that include at least one of those words. Not is used when we want to exclude certain kinds of information. For example, we may decide to exclude a certain type of music the further we go into our research. Now let's scan the results list. Many of these articles are about students from other countries. To narrow the scope, let's add United States to our search. Using the plus symbol, we can add another search box. The first two results are now relevant, so let's add those to a temporary folder to review later. Let's try switching out one of our keywords. We remove well-being and replace it with mental health. This is a broader term that may help us get more results. Here we see the article with the title, Influence of Multiple Music Styles and Composition Styles on College Students' Mental Health. It seems like it would be a great article for our topic. Let's look at the detailed record and abstract more closely. The abstract is a brief summary of an article, so we recommend reading it to determine its relevance. After reading the abstract, we decide this article has a potential as a source and add it to our temporary folder. Other useful information on the details page are the subject terms. These subject terms include additional keywords we might want to try including those that might be used by professionals in the field. Psychological stress-prevention is something we might want to use in a later search. Now that we have a decent list of sources, it's time to start reviewing them. In this database, we can email the results stored in the temporary folder. Not every database includes this folder feature, so it's important to remember to always have a tool to save our sources as we go. In this video, you have learned how to develop keywords, utilize Boolean operators, identify disciplinary jargon, and mine for additional keywords. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have other questions, please refer to our ever-expanding How Do I page or use our Ask a Librarian service.